The kids get confused, you're all kids to me, but the millennials get confused and they equate high performance with goodness. When I'm at a university talk and I say Hitler was a high performer, he might have, he's in the top five high performance people of all time. Arguably, he might be the highest performer of all time because he got people to do crazy shit. I mean, absolutely insane stuff. And it wasn't back in, you know, the 13th or 11th or 12th century he's doing this. He was doing it in the last century. And uh, I often get questions when they see Hitler and these, some of these people up here. They wonder, these are my influencers. I've been influenced because I've read, etc., about their background. But high performance has nothing to do with being goodness or good tissue. Hitler was probably a more high performance guy than our current Pope. And I mean, that's shocking, actually. When, uh, when Bible thumpers uh, hear that. But it's true. Hitler got people to do more shit than the fucking current Pope has. Lordass, come here. I'm talking to you. You with no tits. Nobody talks that way, do they? But you know they think that way, don't you? What President Trump got accused of, no red-blooded male that, that takes a piss out of a dick has not thought what he said. Or even said it. Part? Or even said it themselves. Yeah, yeah, well, 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 most guys don't have any balls to talk that way. But I mean, uh, not one, a priest, the Pope even thinks that shit. It's fucked up. I've been talking this, remember I told you, you've been nice to people all your lives, more or less, right? And what has it gotten you? Fuck all nothing, remember? I've been treating people like shit for, not since I'm five, maybe, since I'm 10. So let's call it 64 years. And almost everybody loves me. Remember I said, don't buy me gifts? Got a gold coin in the mail last night from a guy that can't afford to give me a gold coin. Whoa. Why is it so hard to grasp the obvious? Did Cain kill Abel or Abel kill Cain? Who hit who? Okay, what the fuck did it get him? Adam and Eve, if you believe that. I can go on and on and on. An analogy after analogy, metaphor after metaphor, and yet the majority of the world still want to believe that shit that love gets the job done. And we're going to talk about Steve in a few minutes, who is, um, is absolutely an alpha male, and uh, he is a psycho. The, I told somebody, a Jewish buddy of mine, that I, I, got, I got a gift from a Jew, and uh, he said, check it out. He didn't, I didn't even tell him what it was. Check it out. It's, it's probably a fake or whatever. <laughs> whatever he gave you. So I'm gonna to have Kim take a picture of it because I don't know how to take a picture of my phone. I'd have to turn my phone on. You gotta turn the phone on to take a picture, right? Well, then I'm not taking any fucking picture because the phones are always off. Remember, success leaves clues. So uh, what, what are your takeaways from uh, Steve when he was speaking at Oxford? Well, he's, I think, for whatever reason, he's, like, like you say, that trying to paint his legacy better. He didn't. He didn't exactly say it how it was. He didn't say he was kicking people's asses and trying to throw them out windows. What he was, but yeah. yeah. Except for myself, they all want to, it's like when you're president of the United States, you raise money for a presidential library, and you, and you write your memoirs because you're gonna write history to make sure that you get your point of view across, whether it's true or not. Everybody pretty much does the same, and most of the super wealthy guys and gals, most of the guys are uh, trying to make sure their legacy in history is different, and uh, one of the things that uh, Steve, the former CEO of Microsoft, is concerned about, he, he didn't want them to be known as a one-trick pony. And arguably, uh, to hear the Microsoft story, they were a two or three trick ponies, okay? But, uh, and uh, he, he said, I believe at the beginning of his talk there at Oxford, he knew this was gonna be on YouTube and the internet forever. So he was careful, because I don't believe he said any swear words. I only said fuck twice at Oxford myself, so the, uh, uh, then I asked the moderator, I said, I guess I can't say that, but he, he said, well, Mr. Pena already did, so uh, too late. But what else about Steve? Very enthusiastic. He demonstrated how difficult it was to identify a great idea that would actually stick that will carry the company for the next couple of years. It's very hard, it appears. It is hard, and as I've said all along, for three days now, that uh, it's hard to get to the top, but it's harder to stay on top. And uh, the IBM that was the company, old Big Blue, from 34 years ago, is not the IBM of today. Microsoft of 20, 50, 20, 25 years ago is not the Microsoft of today. Even Google is not the Google is that it was you know, 15 years ago, whatever it was. And it's extremely difficult. That's why companies like Ford are so exceptional. Uh, and they still have a Ford there, but the reason they have a Ford there is because when the Ford the first guy uh, set it up. He set it up where there was voting stock and non-voting stock, and the Ford Foundation still controls the company, i.e. Clinton Ford is still the CEO, or at least he's chairman, I don't know if he's still CEO. But it's hard. Uh, what else about Steve? He has got high self-esteem. Right. He has really high self-esteem. Really well, you know, he wasn't a programmer, but he had a knack for hiring loads of people that were really qualified. 
When you get out there, remember I said the tough thing is to, to run the businesses once you buy. Top line is king. Top line means sales, revenue. You can always find an accountant to fuck around and cut expenses. You can always find people, uh, bean counters to do this, that, and the other thing. But people that drive top line, people that drive the revenue stream are magic. And those are the people. And I've been good all my life finding people that know how to drive the top line. Because I am a top line guy and I know what it takes. And it's just basic sales. All I've done is I've taken my sales skills from selling pots and pans and insurance over kitchen tables to selling government. But uh, Steve is a salesman, still is a salesman. It's hard for him and it's hard for people that are extroverts to keep their mouth shut, <laughs> myself included. But 98% of the people are introverts. So the Zuckerbergs and uh, et cetera, and the Bill Gates, and, and the uh, Warren Buffett, etc., are introverts. Introverts can still be high performance. And again, as I said yesterday afternoon, and I've said a couple times, the kids get confused. You're all kids to me, but the millennials get confused and they equate high performance with goodness. When I'm in a, at a university talk and I say Hitler was a high performance, he might have, he's in the top five high performance people of all time. Arguably, he might be the highest performer of all time because he got people to do crazy shit. I mean, absolutely insane. Stuff. And it wasn't back in, you know, the 13th or 11th or 12th century he's doing this. He was doing it in the last century. And uh, I often get questions when they see Hitler and these, some of these people up here. They wonder, these are my influencers. I've been influenced because I've read, etc., about their background. But high performance has nothing to do with being goodness or goody two-shoes. Hitler was probably a more high-performance guy than our current Pope. And I mean, that's shocking, actually, when, uh, when Bible thumpers uh, hear that. But it's true. Hitler got people to do more shit than the fucking current Pope has. And he's supposed, the current Pope is supposed to be one of the better Popes in the last five, six hundred years. Humble, humility, all that stuff that they're supposed to have. You know, he cooks his own meals, rides around in a Fiat, lives in a little teeny apartment, doesn't live in a big palace, doesn't wear a Prada 1,200 or 1,500 euro shoes, doesn't wear the gold robe. What else about Steve? Yes, sir. He said passion and optimism are important, and then he quoted Colin Powell, he said optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> Yeah, and remember I said to you when you're talking to the financial institutions, one way or another, they're going to sneak a question in, is there any way this deal won't work? How does this deal collapse? How does this deal fold up? And you're going to say, you're going to jump out of your fucking pantyhose and jump up and say, no, there's no fucking way. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread, motherhood, and apple pie. You don't want any vibration whatsoever. And for some of you, for most of you, it's hard for you to be enthusiastic. Enthusiasm, self-esteem, you know, enthusiasm is the God from within. Self-esteem, self-confidence, all the things that we keep on harping. Why do I keep harping on them? Because most of the kids, not just in this group and not just on YouTube, don't have any because their role models have been poor. What else about Steve? When he dropped out of Stanford to go work for Bill Gates for 50000 a year, his mother said, why would anyone ever need a computer? <laughs> well, unfortunately, back in those days, I was part of that camp. So, uh, the uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's unbelievable. But they made a good combination. Back in the old days, they used to call Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside. Outside guy was a sales guy. Inside guy was the guy that made everything work at home. A lot of uh, couples, the wife or the female is uh, inside person and the male is the outside. But now we've got role reversal where the guys are the stay at home parents and uh, the gals are the big income earners. And I know a lot of kids try to split the duties of 50 50. I mean, I just, you could hit me with a sledgehammer for the 10 years and I'll, I'll never get that. I don't, I don't understand that. Um, just as I don't understand when they say we're pregnant. I could give a week fucking seminar on that deal. We're pregnant. You're pregnant, bitch, not me. But that's where we are. That's where we are. What else about Steve? For me, yes, ma'am. The leadership style uh, is too friendly for me, too people oriented. Leadership is, well, I mean, he has extraordinary leadership skills. And, but some of you uh, believe wrongfully that the more gregarious, the more outspoken, the more outgoing person, you equate that with leadership. No, what it is, is it's equated to that person's personality. Leadership is me getting you to do what I want you to do when I fucking want you to do it. Not when you get up off your dead ass and want to do it. And the kids, the current crop of kids, have a hard time understanding that because they want to be in a managerial role and they want the people that are subordinate. First of all, they don't even use words like this, subordinate anymore. Okay, subordinate means underneath, okay? They want the person or persons subordinate to them to come up with the ideas to get the task done on their own and them not have to invoke any force on them because when you invoke force, it's like there's no such thing as constructive criticism. It's criticism, and then that relationship is forever changed. In other words, then they're not gonna like me or they're not gonna respect me. And there was a study done about
uh, might be 10 years ago now, where the rating of the uh, managers was internal from his subordinates. His subordinates rated how good the manager was. And contrary to what was thought, conventional wisdom, the people that got the highest ratings were the toughest ball busters by their own employees, by their own subordinates. Not the ones that went out to lunch and had a coffee and played tennis on the weekend with them. And it's what I say over and over again, the kids don't lack skills, I mean brains, what they lack is leadership. And now, in, in this day and age, it's not considered uh, politically correct, and it's contrary to conventional wisdom to have, uh, I'm the boss and you're the, the underling. And, and that's different than management by objectives. Management by objectives is the bottom of the wrong person adds to the business plan until it gets up to the board level and then the board level proves or disapproves what the whole management ladder has said because the people that really know how to run the business are the people that are doing it in the trenches not some old guy like me sitting on the board that hasn't done uh, manual labor or worked on an assembly line for you know 20 30 40 50 years if at all we'll talk a little bit about management by just tomorrow afternoon in the close anything else about yes sir you mentioned how important it is to know when to fire people remember i said it yesterday the day before or maybe both it's not the people you fire that'll hurt your business, the people you don't fire. It's the people you don't fire. And you gotta, you know, you gotta suck it up. And it should never be easy firing people. Never be easy. And you know, they've got mortgages to pay and all that stuff. But um, high performance people, and I've been fired as a high performance people, and normally because I had my mouth too big and I told everybody they were fucked up and there's a better way to do it. And so, and they didn't hear that and so they threw me out. But the um, high performance people don't have to be managed. We were talking about CFOs yesterday. You get a qualified good CFO, you don't have to tell them what to do or her to do. They know what to do. You get, you know, a CEO or a, a chief operating officer or a chief marketing officer or a, they know what to do. You don't have to manage them. I said a couple days ago, I've never been told did you do this, Dan? Did you remember this? Because I've always overperformed. And sometimes I've stuck my tentacles in the other guy's portfolio and I got in trouble. And that's why I got fired a couple of times because I, I was not only managing what I was supposed to manage, I can help you and you and you too because and, 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 and they consider that uh, an infringement on their territory. Because most management hierarchies are silo hierarchies. I manage my silo, you manage your silo. In other words, you, it's within your own framework and you don't get information and you don't trade information and uh, exchange information information, which now is much easier to do because of um, the advent of, of computers. Uh, although it takes longer to do deals with computers than it did without computers. Because the kids, as I told you a couple days ago, are afraid to draw a line in the sand and uh, say that this is the way we're going to do it. Uh, and even when they draw lines in the sand, like when Mr. Obama drew the line in the sand about Syria, then it changed his mind. Now remember, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. Not everything, not every person you're going to bring onto your dream team is going to work out. I think Josh put it best. He now understands that the dream team, meaning the board of directors and the advisors, the professional advisors, the accountants and the lawyers, are a dream team in transition because the team that's going to do $500 million deals will not be the team that does $5 million deals. Anything else about Steve? Uh, you also saw, what was the other thing? Dong. Pardon? Dong. No, it's modern, modern education. Modern education. Oh, yeah. Yeah, modern education. Or in my opinion, the lack thereof. I don't have anything good to say about it, really. But anybody have anything to say? I want to comment. But that's where we are. And it's all, not all, but almost all bullshit. And, and our kids, three kids, went to some of the best schools in the United States and in Britain. That showed me that uh, in, in my notes I put in, uh, you have to be, maybe change, change the model of how you hire people because the education system is not producing the same quality that they were 50 years ago. And part of the reason they're not producing is because of disparity in, in income. I mean, you're a school teacher and you're, and you're molding lives, let's say, from the second grade to the fifth grade. That's really important, but you get paid nothing. And then you're molding uh, little hit brains from the sixth grade to the twelfth grade. And the twelfth grade's harder because now they're teenagers and they're know-it-alls, but they still don't get paid anything. But even a full professor at Harvard University gets paid $245,000 a year, a tenured professor, which is nothing. No money, and they make their living by uh, speaking engagements and by publishing books. Okay, YouTube, thank you.